Welcome to Exceptional Leadership. I'm your host, Anita Brooks. Though my focus is primarily pointed to leadership at an organizational level, let me assure you, most of what I share will translate to almost any aspect of life. Just tweak the info to fit your leadership role. Because whether you approach my content as a corporate leader, middle manager, small business owner, entrepreneur, or as a family member or friend, you are influencing someone. The question is, are you influencing well, exceptionally well? So let's take courage, exercise wisdom, and humbly invest in the people we are called to influence. Join me on a quest, not for perfection, but absolutely for exceptional leadership. I am going to do something I haven't done for a while today. I've been doing interviews with some amazing guests for the last not only several weeks, but for a few months. And I very much enjoy doing them. However, I have heard from some of you that you would like me to mix that up a little bit and do some solo podcasts like I have in the past where I teach some kind of an exercise or practice that I do, or I give some kind of an inspirational or motivational message. So today, I am going to enact that. And again, want you to know I've heard you and I'm going to be doing a little bit more of that sprinkled in between still some great guests that I have. Today, I want to talk to you about PDA. When we hear about PDA, we often think of public displays of affection, but I use the acronym just a little bit differently. It's for public displays of appreciation. I believe that we can change the world one person at a time with PDA. There's a a quote that I absolutely love by some anonymous person out there, but I've used it for years. It says, speak in such a way that others love to listen to you. Listen in such a way that others love to speak to you. And when it comes to our speaking, I think we would do well as leaders if more of that included appreciation, gratitude, thanksgiving, instead of criticism. So I want to share a story. I think this is a really interesting story. Uh, It kind of in a creative way and maybe a little bit of a with the flair of the dramatic sheds light on the power of appreciation and what it can do for us. So the title of the story is Show Me Your Hands So I Can See Who You Are. A young man we'll call Wesley applied for a managerial position in a bank right out of college. He had successfully passed the first and second interviews. Now he sat in an interview with the CEO whose final word would determine his employment. At first, the CEO went through Wesley's resume and simply made some musing noises. After a few minutes, however, the CEO looked Wesley firmly in the eye and said, Did your father pay your way to this point? Heart pounding, unsure of what the CEO was looking for and why the personal nature of the question, Wesley answered hesitantly but truthfully, No, sir. My father passed away when I was four. My mom's taken care of me as a single parent most of my life. Oh, where does your mom work? The CEO said. Feeling confused that the interview seemed to be more about his parents than himself, Wesley once again answered cautiously, but he was honest. He tried to hide the blush of embarrassment as he spoke. My mom cleans houses. The CEO leaned forward and said, can I see your hands? Now Wesley felt downright uncomfortable, but afraid not to comply, he held his hands out awkwardly. The CEO maintained a poker face as he turned Wesley's hands upside down, obviously measuring some unknown characteristic. And then he asked, have you ever helped your mother wash the clothes before? Done the dishes? Scrub the toilet? Without thinking, Wesley said, not much. My mother has always wanted me to focus on my education. She wants me to study and and read. And besides, she does a faster and much better job than me. And I don't want to get in her way. The CEO silently looked at Wesley's hands a little more, then finally released them and said, I have a request for you, young man. 
at home this evening, I want you to go and clean your mother's hands. Then come see me again tomorrow morning. Now, utterly baffled, Wesley nodded his agreement before exiting the CEO's office. While walking home, Wesley mentally reviewed his interview word for word. He'd never experienced such a strange situation, but he felt he had a high chance of getting the job. So he wanted to comply. When his mom arrived home from cleaning houses all day, Wesley took a deep breath and approached her. Mom, this may sound odd, but I'd like to wash your hands. What? She said with a nervous giggle. I want to wash your hands. Don't be silly. I need to fix supper. Seriously, Mom, just let me take a minute to do this. It's important to me. Wesley said this without explaining why he was so insistent. Fine then, his mom said, but I'd like to know what's gotten into you. Standing in front of the kitchen sink, Wesley gently took his mother's hands in his own and began to massage soap onto them. He noticed a few wrinkles and scars, along with a couple of fresh bruises. Where did these come from? He said as he brushed her skin lightly. Wesley maintained a firm but tender grip in spite of his mother's attempt to pull her hands back. Oh, who knows? It happens a lot when you're cleaning. I don't even notice them anymore, she said. He could feel her discomfort. Suddenly, Wesley felt a rush of sadness. Somehow he had taken his mother's years of sacrifice for granted. He'd lost sight of the pain she endured as she took care of him and met her responsibilities. As he thought of how many bruises, cuts, and abrasions he'd ignored through the years, Wesley had to squeeze his eyes to push back the tears that threatened to spill onto his face. His mother had worked unbelievably hard, and her efforts went mostly unrecognized by him. After he finished cleaning his mother's hands, Wesley prepared dinner for her, then insisted she rest while he washed the dishes and tidied the kitchen. Afterward, he sat down with his mother and asked her questions about her life. They talked well into the night. The next morning, Wesley arrived at the CEO's office on time. What did you learn when you washed your mother's hands? The man asked. Unable to withhold his tears, Wesley said, I learned a lot about her as a person, but most importantly, I discovered how little I appreciate her. Because of what she's given up, I have the opportunities I have today. I wouldn't even be sitting in this office if it wasn't for my mom. The CEO smiled broadly and then said, you are exactly what I'm looking for in a leader. I want to recruit someone who strives to understand the sufferings and sacrifices other people invest that make their success possible. I need someone who appreciates other human beings and is willing to show that appreciation. And I want someone who realizes that people are not made to serve money and power but that money and power are made to serve people. You're hired. Well, in the years that followed, Wesley gave his all, and that included many, many opportunities for him to express his authentic gratitude for the work that other people did. He noticed the small things, the minute moments that maybe another leader would have missed. And he made sure that he let those people know that their work was not only noticed, but that it mattered. It was appreciated. And as a result of that, he received the respect of his subordinates. His employees worked diligently as a team because of the example Wesley set. He never forgot that he could not succeed without the people he worked with. As a result of that, the bank's performance improved tremendously under the exceptional leadership Wesley and his colleagues demonstrated daily. And for Wesley, it had all started from looking closely at his mother's hands and seeing her as a human being. So let me ask you, whose metaphorical hands do you need to look at today? Whose efforts have you ignored, avoided, or missed? Make this the moment you start paying closer attention and commit to PDA. 
So let's talk about public displays of appreciation. Many times when I'm doing business coaching, my the leaders that I work with, because oftentimes I'll start with like an executive team or a CEO or, or someone at a higher level, and, and it almost always trickles down where I end up working with some of their more frontline folks. But they will kind of wonder out loud or question or even sometimes grouse a bit about, well, how in the world do we keep morale up? How do we keep our people motivated? And and we don't have a lot of money to spend because a lot of the businesses I'm working with are small businesses. And public displays of appreciation, though, provides that answer. Public displays of appreciation provides a way for you to help encourage people, make them feel supported, let them know they're noticed, let them know that the work that they're doing makes a difference. And I will tell you, every human being alive, this is my opinion, but I believe we all want to know that we are making a difference. And if we're not making a positive difference, if we're not contributing in some way, then what happens is inside of us, there can become a souring, a bitterness, a frustration, a resentment that grows. And in fact, that feeds us in negative ways. And it causes us to get on a a track or in a rut of just almost giving up, not trying as much, not doing as much for our fellow man or the organizations that we work with. But as leaders, we have the power to turn that around. There is nothing in the world that feels like the infusion of having someone else's acceptance, their acknowledgement, their affirmation that we're on the right track, that we've helped, that Every effort that we've made, even though it may not turn out perfectly, even though it may not lead exactly to the results that we'd hoped for, still, it contributed to progress and forward movement. As leaders, we actually can increase performance and productivity when we speak positivity into our people. But so often we're afraid of it. We're afraid that oh, well, I tell them that they're doing a good job, that they'll stop working so hard. That is not truth. In fact, it has been proven over and over again that when people feel as if someone in a leadership position notices what they're doing, then they want to mimic that. They want to repeat that and copy that. They want to recycle it. They want to do more of it because they want that feel good over all over again. They want the endorphin release, the serotonin that they get whenever they know that they have done something that someone else appreciates. So what kind of leader are you? Are you someone that your people know that when they do something well, that they're going to be recognized. And when I say recognized, let's talk about how to express gratitude. Because see, if you're dealing with an introvert, and if you follow me for very long at all, or you know me, you know that I am a passionate certified personality trainer. I think it's so crucial to meet people where they are, instead of trying to change them and force them to be someone that they're not. So if you are dealing with an introvert, someone who maybe is quieter by nature, someone call them shy, they're not a person who is going to think out loud. They want to think privately to themselves before they would ever speak something. This is not the kind of person that you want to do a big production type of appreciation expressed in front of a lot of other people. You want to do this one-on-one. You want to do this, if possible, in a place of privacy where no one else is around. It's especially meaningful for an introvert if you schedule time out of your day and maybe 
outside of what would be the norm. So instead of maybe calling them into your office, maybe what you do is you invite them to have like a 30 minute coffee or or something with you, or maybe you invite them to a lunch. But over that period of time, across that table. And you know, there's just something that warms up any conversation we have when there's food and fellowship involved. But when you have that conversation, and you're able to talk to them, and you're able to tell them a lot of things that maybe you haven't said out loud that you've noticed, or maybe before going into that, you make it your mission to go find out what you've missed. Talk to other people. What are some unique and creative contributions that they've made? Is there some kind of a project or an idea or a product that came as a result of something that they did or initiated? Or maybe you were stuck somewhere in a process and this individual came along and because of an insight that they brought, it helped get things unstuck. But find out some specific details that show this individual that you're not just like check marking something off the list. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you think that you're just going to like make expressing gratitude one of your to do list items, and it's going to be kind of like a, a, a rote uh, situation. And it's like, oh, this is one of my to do. So I need to hurry up and get that done. Don't bother. You're going to create more damage, and you're going to do no good. People need to know that when you are telling them something that they have done well, that you are saying that you are are thankful for a contribution, that it's meaningful. It's specific. It can be pointed to something directly. Then they know you're telling the truth. If there's no facts to base what you're saying, if it's all just abstract with no specificity, it's meaningless. So scratch it. But if you do that research, and I know it sounds like, oh my gosh, I mean, I don't have time for this. Look, it doesn't take that much time to speak to the other people who work directly around them. That's the best way to deal with someone who's introverted. If someone is an extrovert, they really do appreciate you doing it where other people can see and hear it. There's something about them being noticed, not necessarily in a big splashy public way, but maybe where other peers around them can hear that, that it it adds and deepens that meaning for them. Some of you might struggle with that and you might be like, well, that would be unfair if I would, you know, express gratitude to one person in front of other people and this other person I don't. Well, you have to know the personality of the individual. That introvert doesn't want you to do that. That doesn't feel like a reward to them. But the extrovert, if you do it in front of other people, it's almost like a bonus reward on top of the other. And you can have judgments, you can have opinions about whether someone should or shouldn't be that way. But here's the thing, their wiring is their wiring. You're not going to change who they are. You're not going to change that intrinsic thing that drives them and motivates them. And you can deny what reality is, or you can work with it. So I say, why not just embrace it and do what you know is going to work and move on? But another thing I want to say is when it comes to expressing gratitude, make sure you make the rounds. Look for something in every individual that you can point out that you are grateful for. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. There are going to be some folks that you're going to have to work a little bit harder at with this. There are some people that we just naturally, it's it, it's almost like fingernails on a chalkboard. You know, we just rub each other the wrong way. But I love that proverb that says, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man, or I'll say person, sharpen another. And sometimes it's the people who are are the grittiest for us to deal with that actually can help smooth away our rough edges the best. So don't avoid those people. As a matter of fact, try to look at them with fresh eyes and a fresh heart. What is it 
about them that you can learn that maybe you don't know. Maybe you've been pro- been projecting thoughts on them that are unfair. Maybe they've done more than you know about. And so become that detective who is looking for what they're doing right, not what they're doing wrong, not harping on the things that we see as them doing wrong, and then start speaking into that type of a mindset with them. Here's the thing. We human beings can be conditioned sometimes even like some animals. You know, we remember all of us, the whole Pavlog's exercise that he did with the dogs and, and, you know, rewarding them with food and so forth. Here's the thing. Gratitude is food for the soul. When we feed people spirits in that way, they come back for more. Now, It doesn't mean that they're going to constantly be tugging at you and become needy. And and, and there are some of us that worry about that. No, in reality, though, what they will do is they will repeat behaviors that they know lead you to accept and acknowledge them more. And there are systems you can put into place for gratitude. There are ticklers that you can put in to remind you of people and and things that you can do as far as making sure that that's expressed and that folks aren't missed. Because what you don't want to do is hit 10 people and there's five more. And so you lost interest or you got distracted. You never got to the other five. And before you know it, what you do is you actually can create some inner tensions and resentments and frustrations between folks. So you don't want to do that. When you are intentional and you follow through and you do this with everyone, I can tell you right now, it changes the dynamic of people's thoughts, thought processes. And if you want to change the work, you've got to change thoughts because every action we take begins in the mind. And you as a leader are influencing what kind of thoughts are coming into people's minds. You as a leader have the power to change the performance of your people, depending on whether they feel like there's nothing they can do that's ever going to be good enough for you, or whether they know that when they do something, that you're going to see it as something that is good, something that mattered, something that helped the organization and or helped other people. When you take on that kind of a focus to express or to show PDA, public displays of appreciation, you begin to help smother the voices of the naysayers because it's kind of hard for people to keep chronically complaining when there's so much positive action going on. People complain usually because they're hurting. So as much as it may seem weird, and for some of you, this may feel a little bit warm and fuzzy. Frankly, if you will do this, you will see results because everything's relational. Every bit of work we do has to do with that interconnection that we human beings have. So Set your ticklers in place and determine what you want to do to express gratitude and look people in the eye, say their names, give them concrete examples of something that you have become aware of that they did right and watch their energy, their enthusiasm grow. I'll tell you something else that happens you'll have less turnover in your organization. You won't lose as many people because so many folks leave their company or the place that they work for because of resentment. And I'll tell you something else. When people feel appreciated, they don't justify as much. And justification is that thing that can drive people to take action that they would not normally take. Justification has caused many a person to steal. 
Justification has caused many a person to become destructive in their behavior. Justification has caused many a person to do half a job instead of doing it to the full ability and capacity of what they have to offer. And many a justification has caused someone who could and should be a great employee leave and go someplace else where they do feel more appreciated. Most people leave a business because they don't feel appreciated. So if you think that this is just some, you know, warm and fuzzy, you know, hokey pokey kind of conversation that I'm having, I'm telling you right now, you're missing out. And if you're very honest with yourself and you'll go back and evaluate and you'll look at patterns of people that you've lost along the way, I'll bet you might be able to identify some opportunities that you missed for making people feel as if you saw what they did and you appreciated that. And sometimes even more so, you just appreciated them as a human being. Because look, we can all find something we appreciate about others. Even the things that drive us nuts about someone, even those people who rub us the wrong way, sometimes if we start asking ourselves, well, why? Why do they bother me so much? And maybe start your own brainstorming list where you sit down with a piece of paper and you start listing, what are all the things about them that drive me crazy? And then look for patterns. And then take it another step. Ask yourself, how much of this is truly factual? And then how much of this is based on my presupposition or my own emotions? And then look at it and see, is there something that I either can or need to change in my leadership style? How can I turn this sour lemon of a situation into some sweet lemonade? Because you have more power than you know. And as I often say, words have the power to harm or to heal, depending on how we wield them. Are you intentional to make sure that you are wielding healing words? And there's nothing more healing than for a human being to feel appreciated, to hear that someone is grateful for what they've done, for what they contribute. And I'll tell you right now, we are living in a world where there is a deficit. People are screaming at each other, not only more often, but more loudly than they ever have. They're not looking for the good. They're not looking for the noble, the pure, the honest, the lovely, frankly. They are looking and trying to catch people doing something wrong. They're looking for a reason to criticize. They're looking for something that supports their complaints. Instead of saying, what am I missing that's good? What is it that this person offers that maybe I've overlooked? Maybe I've ignored it. Or maybe because it's them, maybe I just refuse to give them credit. If it was somebody else, I'd give them an add a guy or add a gal, but nope, not this person because they drive me crazy. These are the types of things that we should challenge ourselves with as leaders. And I'll tell you right now, as more and more there is an employment crisis in America, I know that I know that I know it's something I've seen coming for a long time. And I've talked to people about it for a long time. Before there was actually evidence to support what I was saying, frankly, there were many who, you know, they might have smiled or whatever, but they really didn't buy into it. Now we're seeing the results of it because today's employee won't tolerate being made to feel as if they're less than. They won't be, they won't tolerate being made to feel as if you're replaceable. I'll just replace you. Because in fact, today, there may not be another person to replace them with. So it's more important than it's ever been that we as leaders make sure that we do participate in PDA, public displays of appreciation. Let that word become ingrained in your mind appreciate. Remind yourself, put post-it notes, put notes in your phone, 
calendar reminders, put something on your computer, uh, wherever you need to put it, whatever is going to work for you. But remind yourself to use that word appreciation and to use it multiple times a day, but always authentically. When you do, there's going to be a plethora of benefits that happen. You're going to see people around you uh, you have more energy. They're going to light up more. They are going to be more enthusiastic. There will be less complaints. Now, mind you, as I'm talking, no, I'm not talking about that. It's instantly going to happen. So if you're looking for microwave results, no, this is something that takes time. It, it has to simmer for a while. People have to test it and see if it's real, if it's going to be long lasting with you, or if you're playing some kind of mind game with them. Human beings are smart. So you're not going to manipulate them. You're not going to just try to do something to get what you want. But if you do this genuinely, sincerely, and it is consistent, it's long lasting, you're going to get all those benefits I just mentioned. And you're going to see your profits, your net profits improve. Because again, when people feel better about where they're at and what they're doing, if they feel as if they are accepted and appreciated by leadership, not only do they tend to stay, but they tend to perform at a much higher and accurate level. Because see, they're not caught up in all those side emotions that can distract the human mind and cause us to make mistakes or to not follow something through or to miss something important. When we are distracted by, well, I wonder if my boss is mad at me, or I never hear how I'm doing, I don't even know if I'm doing a good job or a bad job, or sometimes that that feeling that, well, I don't know, it, it kind of seems like maybe I'm doing something wrong, but no one said anything, so I don't know if it's me, I don't know if it's them. If you begin to express gratitude on a regular basis, then a lot of that just goes away. And when they're not distracted by those type of thoughts, guess what? They have a sharper focus on the job at hand. Emotions, negative emotions, fearful emotions, insecure emotions steal so much productive time away from us. Again, leader, you have the power to change it. It's not anything that's going to take a a lot of energy. It's not going to take a lot of effort. It's not going to take a lot of time, but it sure could help bring back more money, time, and energy. Because when you're not dealing with all those side emotions and that work gets done, and especially if you have a multiplicity of people that this is happening with all at once, there's a snowball effect that happens in a very positive way that leads to net profitability. And leader, no one else can do this but you. It starts with you, it ends with you. The buck does stop with you. You are the individual who is most responsible for making sure that the organization has a culture of PDA. You have probably heard me talk about gratitude before. Well, you're not gonna stop hearing me talk about it. I'm not going to camp on it all the time, but it's that important. It can make that much of a massive difference. And I want you to get it because you know what? This is simple. This is something you can do. This is getting back to basics. This is giving back dignity to humanity. This is making sure that you are contributing and making a positive difference in the world. So here's the thing, you know it, but what are you going to do with what you know? Are you going to blow this off? Are you going to think this is just woo woo? Or are you going to start acting on it? Is this something that you've heard before and you had good intentions that you were, you were really going to start working on that, but you never did. Today's your day to share PDA. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I want you to know, though, listener, that I am grateful for you. And those are not just mere words. I'm grateful that 
because of you, it helps me fulfill my personal purpose. But because of you, I learn and I grow. Sometimes I hear things that are hard, but I want you to know those hard truths are welcomed. And I appreciate them because it forces me to go and ponder and maybe to face weaknesses and some of my flaws and to work on those. And so I deeply appreciate that. I am thankful for those of you who've given me feedback and ideas on ways to improve not just the podcast, but also my e-blasts and some of the things that I share on social media. So I thank you for that. I thank you that because of your commitment to being not just a leader, but an exceptional leader, that one person at a time, we are making a difference and we're making the world a better place. So I just want you to know that not only is this podcast about you expressing appreciation, but I want you to know you are appreciated. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Exceptional Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Anita Brooks. And I just want to remind you of a truth. If you are not leading at the level that you want to be at, remember, it is never too late for a fresh start with fresh faith. You can start today. You can start making a difference. You can help the world become a better place. You can begin to lead with intent, your family, your friends, the people you work with, your community, in your church, in our nation, across the planet. Whatever opportunities come your way, remember that did not happen by accident. And by stepping up and leading exceptionally well, you will help fulfill the purpose you were created for.